Joe DiStefano, principal and co-founder of Calpar Analytics. I'm going to tell you about a new tool we've been working on called Urban Footprint. Uh, Urban Footprint is basically, I think the best way to think about it is sort of SimCity for real. What it basically does is it combines a very detailed depiction of the existing condition, the base environment as we call it. That becomes the canvas upon which you, a user, can build alternative futures. And those alternative futures can be changes to policy or technology in buildings. It can be changes to land uses and transportation systems. Um, and the idea is that you, if you apply change to a base canvas, it produces a future scenario. And then it very importantly and very critically tells you the impacts of those changes. So it helps you understand the water impacts, the water use impacts, the energy impacts, the fiscal impacts to your city, the public health impacts, the impact on obesity and public health costs associated with the changes you've just applied. If you're an energy agency and you want to understand the impact of a particular energy policy on existing buildings, it'll help you understand that. Um, so I'll give you a, a brief overview of the, of the system. Um, it's a completely web-based, and it's, uh, for those uh, tech folks out there, it's an open source stack. It's a 100% non-proprietary open source stack of software that we typically serve up in the cloud on Amazon EC2, or it can also be served locally. You're looking at it now in a Google Chrome interface. It's just, like, again, 100% web-based. You don't read it. No actual software lives on your computer. It's living on servers. Um, this is the interface for those who utilize uh, GIS software, like ArcGIS. It'll look... ArcGIS that'll look familiar. Um, but basically what we've done is we've taken about you know, 25 to 30 years of scenario development experience and we're attempting to operationalize that within a piece of software to provide access to the, the sort of methodologies that we've deployed to build and analyze futures, um, provide access to you know, cities, counties, NGOs, um, or any other potential users in the energy sector, water sector, etc. Um, so Here's a, here's a shot of uh, Yolo County in the Sacramento region, just a particular area there. Um, we can convey all kinds of you know, interesting you know, aerial and other data. And again, this is just live over the web. So I'm going to lay down sort of existing land use, for example. Um, there's a whole series of um, sort of basic program level characteristics about what's on the ground today, employment by mix, dwelling units by type. This is a system right now that you're looking at that's been designed for use by planners. Um, we have other ways of designing the system for use by, say, folks who are less versed in, in sort of planning and land use development. Um, but the idea here is a planner doing a general plan or a regional plan or wanting to understand the impact of a particular change or just see that change on the ground um, might go through a system whereby they select a series of parcels, for example. There's all different ways this might happen. You might select all the parcels within a quarter mile of light rail stops or do something based on a rule. But I'm just going to quickly show you um, a selection here. And the way that a system like this, this is a workflow designed to help you just apply change. You have a series of land use categories or characteristics available to us here. I'm going to click on you know, changing this uh, industrial area to medium density detached residential. I'm going to say I want to clear what's on the ground. I'm just going to apply that. It's going to take a couple seconds. We're working on a slow internet connection here at the hotel. But as soon as this updates, what it's going to do here is it's going to update all the program level characteristics of this scenario on the fly. And it's also going to rerun energy and water and travel and fiscal and other impacts as well. So I've just made a change there um, in this you know, first scenario, if you will. Um, it's rebuilding. You can see all those charts just built on the fly. Again, I'm going to click on this analysis tab. And I'm going to take a look at a series of analysis models that I have available to me. So, for example, I just clicked on water. And it's telling me scenario-wide how much indoor and outdoor water use um, is happening in the buildings here. I can do the same thing with energy. I can map that water use. So if I want to take a look at um, how water is being used across this particular landscape, low and high levels of water use, I can take a look at energy. I can look at energy in the commercial and residential building sector. I can change policies that relate to. Um, so this is this is taking a look at you know square footage of different uh, residential and commercial building types. I can also change policies and building conservation, gray water systems, things like that, and see the impacts of that. This is um, energy use at the parcel scale for Yellow County. 
Um, I can look at travel characteristics. We have an onboard travel engine, which is going to tell us not just vehicle miles traveled, um, transit modes here, and things like that, but also carbon emissions and household costs and other critical sort of derivative metrics that come out of the travel system. So I can take a look here at, say, vehicle miles traveled per household, if you will. Um, green, green households in this case, in the more kind of urban, compact, walkable zone, or maybe traveling seven or eight thousand miles per household. Red households out in the more suburban locations are traveling, say, twenty-five or thirty thousand per household. So this helps you understand how land use patterns and changes to those patterns and changes to land and transportation infrastructure impact how people will travel in the future or how your current condition is traveling. Um, Something else here. So basically, the idea here is like if you built, let's say for example, you you built a scenario and you want to make changes to that scenario. Again, when it comes to workflows, what we've tried to do here is set up systems that say, hey, I've got scenario one here. I want to clone that scenario, and I want to call it, you know, scenario with, you know, super transit access scenario. The system will allow you to just basically do that. I'm not going to do it right here. It'll take a few minutes. Um, it will clone that scenario. It will set it up for you, load it up here with the name you gave it, and then you can just you know begin sort of pivoting. The idea is this is iterative. Um, it facilitates scenario development um, and brings sort of powerful analytical tools um, to more people uh, just over the web.